Good evening, everybody. I'm Ines Ibaña, and I'm faculty here at CIS. And as you can see here, I'm going to be talking about the no-built part of the built environment, so urban forest. And these are critical um, ideas in cities. And just to make it clear, I'm not talking about a street trees or parks. These are remnant forest patches that were left behind. But they are really important in the built environment, not only because kids can go and be active there, you can take your dog for a walk, but they also are critical to reduce the storm water runoff, you know, so they reduce the, um, the chances, the risk of flooding in a built environment. They are also good to mitigate extreme climatic events, both in the summer but also in the winter. They help with air purification, and not because the trees are producing oxygen, but the trees with their canopies and their leaves. They can intercept particles, pollutants that are in the air. So these are critical areas in cities that provide many ecosystem services, and they are doing it at no cost. There is usually no management, or very little management, in these forests, um, for the remnant forests in the city. So the question that we have in our group is how will global change affect these forests? We know climate is changing, we know, we know pollution is also increasing, we also have introduction of many species, so can we count on these forests or not? Are they going to be affected? Another reason why we also like to study these forests is because they are already experiencing many of these global change factors that we are predicting for more rural or wild forests. They are already under the heat island effects, so they are experiencing uh, higher uh, temperatures. They are kingdoms for invasive and introduced species, so we can already uh, study how these introductions affect forests. So again, there are also a laboratory of what we should expect in other more um, rural type of forests. So how do we study it? So the methodology that we use is we work in gradients. We work in gradients that go from what we call, consider to be wild, wide, large forest spaces, and we go all the way to very urbanized and built environments. And we look for forest uh, fragments in all these different areas, and we study different uh, uh, forest processes. We do this here in Washington County in Ann Arbor, and you may think that Ann Arbor is not a very built environment, but it, Ann Arbor is a very representative city of Eastern North America, so the studies that we are having, um, we are doing, and could be extrapolated to many other places. And then what we do is to look at these forests and look at different processes that are critical for the maintenance of the tree populations that you see in these forests. We look into seed predation, the recruitment of new individuals. We also look at um, symbiosis with mycorrhizal fungi, and we do that because these are uh, critical symbiosis for plants. They need them to grow and survive, many of them. And what we see is that with increased pollution in the soils, these mycorrhizal um, species can be highly affected. We also look at it herbivory. You all know about deer eating plants, um, how these may increase with urbanization. And we also look at tree growth as a measure of vigor and how these forests um, may be able to maintain themselves. So just a few findings. What we see here, so once we look at what's happening along this gradient and we look at these different effects, what we see is an increase in seed predation, which is surprised me because if you just need to walk through the diag and you can see the squirrels coming out of the trash cans with a piece of pizza. So why do they prefer acorns than pizza when there's all this food in the cities? But predation seems to increase. We also see a dramatic decrease in seedling recruitment, and we have been trying to explain what it is. It's the heat island effect, it's high herbivory, but we can't, so we don't know yet. No changes in symbiotic relationships, that's good. An increase in herbivory, and depending on the species, we see decreases in um, growth of some of these species. So it's not looking good for urban forests, I have to say. I teach three courses that are highly related to my area of expertise. We teach uh, wooded plants, course ecology and manager, uh, management, and also analysis, but I want to spend a little bit of more of my remaining time on engagement. So one of the things that we do is to develop curriculum for uh, seventh grade and ninth grade students in Ann Arbor. So we have two projects, these two right here, and we don't only uh, develop lesson plans that they can implement in the classroom, but they also have activities outdoors. 
And if there is something good about Ann Arbor is that every single public school has a nearby forest. So we can develop activities, you learn about them in the class, but then they go outside and they collect the old data that they bring into the class and they also develop a statistical models to, uh, to analyze it. And finally, we are also working on invasive species in this area. Thank you.